Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Waldo and in this video we're going to be completing one more part of the Cummins swap by installing a high performance fast fuel system into this GMC. We're doing a Cummins swap. We have a set of China's finest. This is it, my 1995 C3500 HD. We're swapping a 24-valve Cummins into it, along with a 5-speed Eaton Fuller transmission out of a Freightliner. The goal is to have a capable and comfortable truck for towing and hauling future projects. And I'm going to cut it up and weld it together into the shape of a fan shroud. It's a little bit ridiculous. And thick is this steel. There it is. This is a 24 valve Cummins, and there's one reason why people generally prefer the 12 valve Cummins, and it's this right here. This is a VP44 fuel injection pump, and it's simply not as desirable as a P7100 injection pump, also known as a P pump, that's found on 12 valve Cummins. The P pump is desirable because it's extremely reliable and it's very easy to modify for inexpensive power gains. The VP44 pump, on the other hand, is computer controlled and lacks the reliability of the P-Pump. Probably the main reason is that while the P-Pump is lubricated by engine oil, the VP44 pump is lubricated and cooled by the diesel fuel that gets pumped through it by the lift pump. The factory Dodge lift pumps were known to fail, which would starve the VP44 injection pump of fuel, causing it to fail. With a replacement cost of over $1,000, the VP44 pump has developed somewhat of a poor reputation. To combat this problem, I'm installing a high-performance lift pump, which will ensure that the VP44 injection pump has a steady supply of fuel for cooling and lubrication. I'll also install a fuel pressure gauge so that I can monitor the situation, but that will be for a separate video dedicated to gauges. First, let's get this removed from the Dodge donor truck. Oh, check this out in the driveway over here. This is my next project. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you already would have gotten a sneak peek of this, but pay attention for a video coming up on this, hopefully soon. I think we're gonna end up doing a diesel swap on this. There it is, simple as that. We'll get these lines undone and then we'll figure out how we're gonna fit it into the GMC. So this is what we're dealing with here. We got the cab up front there. We got the fuel tank all the way here in the back. And I'm thinking about mounting the lift pump right about there in the middle. So I'm gonna drill a hole in the frame here and then I'm gonna mount it. I think it's gonna go something like this. And the reason why I want to mount it inside the frame rails is because when I have a flatbed installed on this, I actually want to have all this space over here for some nice big toolboxes. And if I mount this outside of the frame rails, then that takes up quite a bit of that space. Plus, look at all this unused space in here. Let's use it. We're going to drill a half inch hole through here. Right about here. Looks good. There we go. Beautiful. That's not going anywhere. So I ordered a bunch of new hoses and connectors and stuff so that I can hook this up. And while we're waiting for those to come in, let's change these fuel filters out. That's pretty nasty. Now you can get replacement fast fuel filters for these, but I decided instead to go with Baldwin filters because these are cheap and I can get them on Amazon. Oil up the O-ring. And we're going to replace the water separator as well. 
It's a pretty cool unit that this has a water separator in addition to a regular filter. Don't forget this little O-ring that goes up in here and goes like that. Nice. Oh, and maybe I should mention, with this system, pre-filling the filters is not required. The pump will take care of that very quickly for you. The next day. I just got this package in from McMaster Car. It's got some fuel hose, some push lock connectors. These guys are awesome. They managed to get this to me with one day shipping on the week of Christmas. So I am gonna try to salvage some of these connectors because I think I'm gonna need most of them. Not exactly the best way to do this since it does spin, but I'm working with what I've got. All right, so I'm gonna cut this very carefully and I'm gonna be specifically careful not to score the barbs because that could cause these to leak. Cut very gently. There we go, beautiful. And I guess just to show you how these work, these are push lock connectors. So you take this hose and you just push it on and the barbs are pretty aggressive. So they, when you try to pull it off, they grab onto the hose really well and prevent you from pulling it off. These can hold about 300 PSI. All right, we're gonna get some measurements and figure out how long these lines need to be. So the pump will use this line to suck fuel out of the tank. This is the fuel return from the engine. And this is supposed to be a vent valve, but I do have a vented fuel cap. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use this as the return from the pump. So this is the output to the engine. This is the return to the tank. So that's an easy one. And that's just about four feet, a little under four feet. I mean, that's also another four feet. I'll add a little bit of room so that it can curve and go up against through the frame rails and come back this way. So yeah, we're about four feet for both of them. And then the line that goes towards the engine will make that about 11 feet. And that'll leave room for a T-fitting so that I can send fuel pressure off to a gauge in the cab. I'm gonna throw some oil in here to lubricate this. And then we'll throw some oil on the fitting as well. Just insert it in here. Beautiful. All right, I got all these fuel lines made up, so let's start connecting them. So this is gonna be the return. Let me get hooked up to this one. This is the return to the tank. We'll run this through here. I know this looks silly that I'm using this hose here. This is 5 8 and this is half inch hose, so I did need an adapter to make this work. Throw a hose clamp on here. Nice. All right, so that's the return line from the pump back to the tank. Next, I have the intake line, so suction from the tank to the pump. All right, so we got the suction hose hooked up. All right, this end goes on the injection pump right here. And I haven't finished this end yet because I gotta cut this to size to meet up with that other piece where it'll meet at that T fitting. 
So for the fuel return from the engine, I went ahead and removed this fuel line from the Dodge. This hooks up to the back of the engine. And then on the other end of it, I just cut it off and I'll use hose clamps to attach a fuel line to this and that'll return fuel to the tank. All right, with all the hoses run, it's now time to look at the wiring. This is the wiring harness that came with the fuel pump. So on one end of this harness, we have this connector here, which plugs directly into the fuel pump. And then on the other end here, we have this, which hooks up to the battery. That goes through a 20 amp fuse here, and then goes to a relay. And then the other input to the relay is this connector, which goes to the power for the factory lift pump. The reason why this is needed is because this runs at a much higher current than the factory lift pump does. And so the factory lift pump turns on the relay, which it sends battery power directly to this lift pump. So this connector does have some weather sealing, but we're gonna throw a little bit of dielectric grease in here just for good measure, because corrosion really is your enemy. So this connector on the harness plugs into where the factory lift pump goes, and this sends the signal to the relay. This, however, is intended for the Dodge, and this being a GM, it doesn't have the same type of connector. So instead, I'm going to solder this on, which is the right GM connector. Yeah, so whenever I'm doing any kind of electrical wiring for automotive applications and for a lot of other applications, I always solder my connections and I use heat shrink. And for automotive applications specifically, that's really important because your wires are gonna be exposed to corrosion and vibration. And by soldering them together and then putting heat shrink over them, you really ensure that your connection's gonna last a long time. Any other method and you're gonna see failures in your connections. This lighter has seen better days, but it gets the job done. I'm gonna be careful not to burn your heat shrink. And there it is, beautiful. This should last a long time. So I'm not at a point in the project where I'm ready to do the final wiring yet. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna have a helper attach these to the battery terminals just so that we can test this thing out. So there's not too much fuel in the tank right now. So I'm just gonna add five gallons and hopefully that'll be enough for the tank to work. I promise this is fuel and not hydraulic oil. Oh, yeah, yep. Yeah. All right, only a little bit of a mess. It's rust preventative. So I have a helper that's about to connect to the terminals here. So we're gonna see if this thing works. So go ahead and connect to the terminals. There it is. You can hear the pump. It might take a little while because it's got to fill up the fuel filters. It sounds like it's pulling fuel now. I hear it. It's coming. There it is. Beautiful. Well, it looks like it works. All right, you can get stop it now. And don't forget to secure your fuel lines and your electrical wires. Zip ties are a great way to do it because they're economical, easy, and very effective. With the fuel system working, that's one more piece of the puzzle complete. The next video will be on the Land Rover project. The vehicle was advertised as having a major issue, but I suspect it may end up being a simple fix. Keep an eye out for that video coming out soon, and we'll see if I ended up getting a good deal or if I end up having a major vehicle system to repair. Thank you so much for watching, and have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.